It is so great catching up with my next guest because she is coming off a really big win last weekend at UFC 274. It's Macy Chasson back here on the program. Macy, how are you? I'm doing good, man. I'm uh, I'm on a little high right now, you know? I bet. I bet. I know you were just hanging out outside, so won't keep you too long here today. But uh, congratulations on the win. Just I, I got to ask just first, how much of a weight was it lifted off your shoulders getting that type of win, that type of performance over a really tough fighter in Norma Dumont? You know, I didn't, I, I, uh, I knew that this was like going to be a big fight for me. Uh, and when we got the call for the fight, I mean, we knew that this was going to be like the hardest fight that I've had thus far. Uh, like honestly in my, in all, out of all of my fights in my career, this is probably the toughest fight, you know, cause she's a contender. Um, and she's definitely proven herself, but I tried, you know, I tried not to think about any results this whole camp. And all I, all I tried to think about was, uh, was training, you know? Mm. And, um, and, and that, and that's really, that really was the key for me, you know, because I tend to overthink a lot of things, but, but just staying focused and, and on the goal, you know, which was to perform at the highest level in there. Uh, and, and I, and, you know, I'm pretty proud of myself. Obviously there's stuff I need to work on, but, um, you know, but we set out and we did it. You certainly did. Uh, how was it fighting at 145 again? Seemed like you were really comfortable in there. Everything looked good. Oh my God. Uh, <laughs> 35 is, is, uh, is hard. 35 is hard. Um, 45 is, is, you know, a normal weight cut, which people would consider hard, right? Weight cuts aren't great. Um, uh, I was in great shape for this fight. My resting heart rate was around 38. Um, I was running probably about 30 miles a week on top of training. So, uh, not too far off from 35. I'm just, I was just able to refuel myself, you know, yeah. Um, which, which was the key. And when I went in there and I mean, I just felt, I just felt so much stronger, you know, especially in the wrestling. I mean, it, it showed. And she ended up missing weight. Uh, did the confidence level go up a little bit? Just knowing she had a tough time. I know you're confident no matter what fight you're going into, but hearing that I'm sure you're like, okay, she's probably having a hard time. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I, uh, I, I try not to think about any of that stuff because I was just so on point and so ready this whole camp, like I was just so well prepared and mentally well prepared too. You know, I, a lot, I worked a lot on my mental, uh, and, and physical too, but, but I really honed in on my mental skills this camp. And, uh, and, and when I heard it, I was like, all right, shit, that sucks. That's shitty. You know, um, she's probably going to be a little bit bigger than me. And, uh, and that was actually my fear at 35, you know, cause we were supposed to originally fight this fight in Brazil at oh, 35. Right. And I, you know, my first thought that came to mind for my coach, I was like, I don't know if I'll make 35 in Brazil just because of the flight. And I already have like, I mean, I'm already squeezing the last bit out of me at 35. So, uh, you know, so they were like, okay, let's do the fight at 45. Um, and she's missed weight at 35 anyway. So it just seemed like the right, you know, the right call. And, uh, you know, I mean, I'm not really sure what happened on her end. And there was that whole scale situation yeah. that was going on. So that, that may have had something to do with it. Uh, but I really wasn't like surprised, nor was I in shock. Um, not that I thought she was going to miss weight. I just was, like I said, I was just so prepared and just ready to fight that I just didn't even care. You know, I mean, my coach and I were like, I don't care if she comes in at like 150, like yeah. we're taking the fight no matter what we're taking the fight no matter what. So you mentioned being well prepared going into the fight. Was there anything in the fight from her end that surprised you? Maybe, maybe something you weren't expecting. Uh, honestly, I had no surprises. I mean, I, I know she hits hard. Um, we studied her extensively. Uh, I, uh, I watched a little bit of her training videos that she had with Jenna Fabian. And, um, I saw that she actually like was looking to wrestle a little bit. Um, I'm not sure if that was her game plan for me, but her training videos showed that she was trying to wrestle. Uh, but, um, the thing that surprised me the most, like, was the fact that like how solid she was like whenever I threw a punch or a kick, it was almost like, it was almost like hitting a wall that yeah. <laughs> I remember there was one kick that I threw. I kind of like, like flew back and I was like, shit, like she's got a really solid base. I mean, she's got thick legs, very athletic, lower body. Um, so I was really surprised that I was able to get, you know, a lot of those takedowns that I was, that, that I, that I got. Goes to the judges scorecards again. You never know what the judges, um, how confident were you? I think most people watching felt like those first two rounds for sure you won. Uh, what, what was your feeling going to the judges scorecards? Uh, I mean, I knew I had that fight in the bag. I mean, uh, like from every corner, from every angle. And, um, and I was very surprised when they said split, split decision. So, yeah. 
um, that was that was like a that was a real scary moment for me, and I was like, whoa, like you know what's going on with the judges, you know. Uh, they made a few weird calls that night anyway, so I was I was a little uh, I was a little flustered, but um, but I knew like I mean right after right after the fight was finished, I had my hand up. I was like, I know I won that. Yeah. So. Good. That's great. Uh, now, how do you celebrate after a win like that? Again, the fight itself was awesome. Like, I think it played out really well. I think fans were excited about it. Uh, I know you needed this win. You went out there, performed well. How do you celebrate after a big win like that? Um, you know, I always have a hard time after wins because, like, especially I trained so hard for this fight that I, that I really, like, I really, 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 really wanted to, like, perform well. And, and I'm just, like, I'm such an overthinker and I'm so anal about shit that it, like, just eats me alive, you know? So it's, like, instead of being on, a, like, you know, the celebratory phase the last few days, I've just been sitting thinking, like, okay, what could I have done better, you know? Okay. And I'm honestly so motivated. Even, like, I have not had a day off, like, at all through this camp. Like, I trained Monday through Sunday. Wow. Monday through Sunday. And uh, because there was a lot of stuff that I needed to improve on, especially with the back takes and the seat belts and stuff like that and the front headlock stuff, um, especially since the Rocky fight. Um, so I, uh, so I'm like honestly so motivated, like just because like my training and the time and work that I put in like really showed through this fight and it really shined. And, and I'm like just, I'm so motivated to get better. Like I, I already know like what I got to do when I get back into training. Um, but Right now, I'm just working on like corrective stuff, just to, uh, just to make sure my body's like firing the right way, and and I'll be back in a training next week. But but I'm going uh, I'm going to New Orleans this week. I'll be leaving awesome. Thursday. But as I'm only going for like four days, Thursday through Sunday, because I'm trying not to hurt myself too bad, because I really <laughs> right. don't that much. But uh, but I know it's expected of me when I go there. So uh, so we'll have a little bit of downtime then, and then uh, and then I actually have a trip to Mexico at the end of May. So oh, look at you! You got everything planned out. That's perfect. Yeah, that's yeah, cool. so it's so. a little bit of a happy ending. And I told myself, I'm not going to fucking Mexico unless I have a win. There so. you go. And you got it. You got it done. <laughs> um, there's a lot of there's a lot of stuff that happened on your card. I don't know if you caught the yeah. rest of it, uh, you know, the rest of the, the card. But obviously the main event, Charles Oliveira submitting Justin Gaethje. What did you think of that? Charles looks like he's on another level right now. Charles is, is so impressive. I mean, it, and, and it really shows like even outside of the octagon, like uh, him and his team were like right down the hall from me in the hotel. And I shit you not, like right after weigh-ins, they were literally partying until the next day. Wow. Until the next day. I was like, dude, are you going to rest and chill and like hang out? And and uh, they, they just love to be there. I mean, he just truly loves what he does, you know, and he has fun doing it and his team has fun. And I think that's so important. You know, we put so much pressure on ourselves like, oh, we got to get this done. There's enough pressure when you go in there. Right. So why not make it fun? Why not make it a good time? And I think that's one of the things that I love about him is that. Not only is he like a fucking G, like all around badass fighter, but he just seems like he genuinely loves life and he enjoys like the moment, you know, and that's so freaking important in this sport. It's so important. Um, so that is like one of my favorite things about him. He's always like having a good time, smile on his face. I never see him up, you know, he's never yeah. seen like and like upset or mad or anything like that. Call me an event. Maybe not the fight everyone wanted. Carla Esparza is the new strawweight champion. What did you think of that whole fight? It was a bit of a weird one. It was really weird. I'm not really sure how to how to make of it, you know. And the, and the, honestly, the fans in Arizona were brutal, you know. And I know that this is the thing. At the end of the day, it's a sport. Like like when I went when I lived in New Orleans and I went and watched like Atlanta Falcons play the Saints. Like I thought like just being out there, I thought a Falcon was gonna kill me, you know. Like <laughs> I mean, that's the way sports are, and it just depends on the city that you're in and uh i mean so the crowd like was kind of shitty but at the end of the day it's a sport you know and and i think vice versa like they need to people need to understand that this is a sport you know and that people are looking to win and sometimes it's not going to be exciting sometimes you have a weird matchup you have someone who's trying to do one thing and then the other person is trying to do the other and it like masks each other's skills you know and and people don't realize that you know uh and you have some people like Dustin Poirier, Gaethje, or you have like Oliviera that, that are just on top of everything that they do, you know? Um, so you're not always going to get that, that 100% finish that you want to see, you know, people want to see blood all the time. And it's just, sometimes it's a little bit more technical than that. Uh, and I think that's why it ended up being a weird fight. You know, I think Rose was trying to keep some distance and Carla was trying to pressure and get the takedown, you know? 
Yeah. No, no. Well, well, well said. Good assessment there. And just last thing on the card, that Michael Chandler knockout, the front kick to the face, that was pretty crazy. What did you think of that? It was wild. That was wild. And I 100% guarantee you that that was something he was not working, that he just, like, threw crazy all of a sudden. Because, uh, cause, um, I mean, it just kind of came out of nowhere, you know? Yeah. And Tony, Tony was looking great, too. And yeah. Tony's kind of an awkward fighter, you know. You never know what's going to come next with him, and uh, and that was that was a really exciting fight. And um, I saw a video today where Tony was like up with one of the uh, medical physicians, and I was like, okay, thank God he's good because I didn't I hadn't I didn't get to watch like after like the knockout like see him get up and or anything like that. You know, he was pretty uh, wrapped up after that. It was pretty bad. You mentioned, or we talked about off the top with this being at 45. Is that the plan going forward, or do you want to go back down to bantamweight? Because you look great on the weekend, and I I would hope they would revive this featherweight division because there's a lot of exciting fighters that could potentially compete in there, like yourself. Well, I mean, you know, this is like, this has been the problem, you know, ever since Tough, like, the division just really has never hasn't been able to get another foot in front of the other, you know. Um, And there are multiple girls that could be fighting up and down. Yeah. At, at 45, you know, uh, there's something I have in mind for my next fight at 45. Um, I'm not sure if it'll take, but uh, it, it's it's the right idea. But I, I would like to com- continue to compete up and down 35 and 45. Um, we, I just don't know really. I just don't really know what's next at 45. I mean, there's there's one person particularly in mind, but uh, she also fights at 35 as well. But um but I mean, this is why I fight at 35 because it's, there's just there's more room for me to grow. You know, there's mm-hmm. more people for me to fight. If I was if I only fought at 45 since tough, I probably wouldn't have had as many fights as I've had now. You know, and and the, and I need the experience and I need the ring time. You know, um, on the on the other side of winning, you know, I mean that's important too. But also getting the experience in there is, is super important. Uh, so I mean, I just I don't know, you know. Okay, well, a couple of things you said there. First, um, you know, the, the like I, I'm with you. I don't know why more 35ers don't move up, especially because, and I know they don't really promote the division or do much there, but you would not think if you, the goal is a title, it would be much easier with a division that doesn't have that many fighters. Is, is that something that kind of crossed your mind as well? That like, if they do want to continue fights at 45, I mean, you might only be a couple fights away from, you know, fighting like an Amanda Nunes. Yeah, I mean, that's true. Uh You know, if I would have performed a little bit better than, than I would have this weekend, then maybe we would be in talks of something like that but but uh you know i didn't i performed well but not enough to to call out a champion right but uh right, okay but um you know i mean norma was number two at 45 so it's like you know what's next for me am i going to be hanging out at 45 for two years until someone's right until you know someone's someone can fight uh so that's that's my only option that's really why i need to move back down to 35 in between uh okay but um you know, I mean, there's a lot of girls at 35 that could be fighting at 45. You that, know? That's what I was thinking, too, because there are some that, you know, they, some of them miss weight or some of them are just big for the weight class. I just think you'd get a better fight that way when you got two girls kind of fighting a little bit, you know, not having to cut as much weight. Yeah, 100 percent. I agree with you. Um, sure. I don't know why people are so scared of it. I really yeah, don't, because sure. 45 really like if you, I'm looking at some of the girls in PFL at 155 and they look great. Yeah, they you do. Know, they're, they're, I mean, like Jenna. And then, uh, and Julia Budd, I mean, they physically look great at 55, you know? And, and I just, I think a lot of us are just destroying ourselves to get to 35 every single time when, okay, why don't we just fight at 45 in between? I mean, you're still working towards a goal, right? You're still working towards a belt. You're still working for a title shot. I mean, you know, you're working towards something and, and there just has, happens to be less people in that division. Yeah. Now you threw out a little teaser there. That's what we call this in, in my industry about who you want to fight next. Any any hints? Anyone you can let me know that you want to fight next? I mean, this is the thing. I would love to run back the whole Aspen Lad debacle. Okay. And I would love to run that back at 45. I think that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. You guys both fought Raquel. Uh, obviously, yeah. Aspen lost to her as well. So I think that makes a ton of sense uh, for both of you, actually. And I think this way, there's no issues with cutting weight, right? Because it's you know you guys are all good. Exactly, 100%. There's no, there's no if, and, or but. At yeah. 45, you know, there's a guarantee. So, okay, I like it. That's good. Now, you talked about uh, Mexico and you know going back to New Orleans and all that. Uh, when would you like to have that next fight? Do you have an idea of when you want uh, your next fight to take place? Yeah, I mean, honestly, as soon as I get back from Mexico at the end of May, I'm I'm already back in. 
So okay. I'll be back into full training next week, like actual hard training. And then I leave for Mexico for a week. And then when I come back, I mean, it's, it's, it's all uphill from there. So, I mean, okay. it really just depends on the match that we get. If it's the match that I'm looking for, then we shouldn't have, we shouldn't have to prepare for 12 weeks, right? Maybe yeah. six. So, you know, a few months from now, I'll, I'll be looking to get back in there. You know, like I said, I'm so motivated right now. Like I can't wait to just like get better off of the things that I've already gotten better up, like in, a, in my last fight. Is UFC Austin cutting it too close? I think that's June 18th. Would that be too close to for your next fight after yeah. coming back from the trip? Honestly, I wouldn't mind being on a Dallas card. Yeah, that's true too. Yeah, good thinking. July good thinking. 30th, right? Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. That, would be a, that honestly would be a perfect time. There you go. And just remind me, how many more fights do you have left on your contract? You know? Uh. Yeah, but you must have a few because obviously if you're coming off a win like this, usually if you have like one left, you'd renegotiate. But because uh, I believe Safe is the one who sort of handles all that, right? Yeah, he handles all that stuff. He's the yeah. man. He is. Uh, he is. I think I have like three, two or three. Oh, gotcha. Okay, yeah. I, yeah. I figured, figured it was a few, something like yeah. that. Macy, I told you I wasn't going to keep you too long. I did take you a little bit longer than I thought, but uh, thanks so much for taking the time. Again, congrats on the win. Just remind people where they can get a hold of you on social media. And if you got any sponsors or shout outs, I'll give you the last word. So you guys can uh, get a hold of me at uh, Macy Chasson. That's M-A-C-Y-C-H-I-A-S-S-O-N on instagram i do not have twitter anymore i deleted it because and it's been the best decision i've ever made in my life <laughs> i'll just i just live through other people with twitter i'm like all right what do they say let me look it up on your phone all right cool yeah. i'm not dealing with it you know yeah. uh and then um sponsorship wise um i just want to i want to actually shout out to fortis mma and charles bird safe sode and uh miles johns fernie garcia um, Damon Jackson, you know, th those, those guys right there, like those group of guys, like really have done so much work with me and, um, I'm just so appreciative for where I'm at and, and, you know, under the guidance of who I am under, you know, I mean, it, it's a solid team. I just never imagined I'd ever, you know, come this far, you know, uh, and, and, and I'm really appreciative of them. Um, reform orthopedics, uh, for keeping me healthy, uh, extreme studio performance, um, mid city MMA. Tan Lee also. Tan Lee was a was a small part of my camp. He came out and helped me out for about a week uh, in Dallas. So it's always fun to have him around. He's he's a great guy and he's he's a phenomenal fighter as well. So um, but that's it.